you know, it's a very popular thing these days, people using furniture for vanities. But I got to tell you, they should do a lot more research because there's plumbing issues and there's all kinds of things you should consider. I mean, it was never designed to be in a bathroom That's with right. plumbing inside of it. Right. Now, first of all, many of them are too high. Now, this vanity is 34 and a quarter. A typical vanity is 30 to 32. Mm -hmm. But people today want them a little bit higher, so that's okay, and the homeowners want it that high. So we'll keep it this height. Right. No modification It's there. also a bit shallow overall. So that may present some problems. And you know, they want these drawers to be used for storage. They want them to be functional. But remember, we got plumbing to deal with. It's all roughed in. It's going to come right through the back of the cabinet. So we're going to have to make some modifications here. OK. All right, so now the top is, the top originally, they were thinking about putting on a vessel sink. And the problem with this is it gets even higher. And they have young children. So getting to the sink is not going to work very well for them. So not something on top. Right. Now Want the me top, to take this off? That's going to go away. It's going to be replaced. Oh, we're not going to use this in the final piece? No. We're going to no. use stone. OK. Now they looked into an undermount sink. People like undermount sinks because the granite top or whatever stone goes over the top and gives a nice clean edge around the perimeter of the sink. You think they'll but use a piece of marble like this? That's what they're going to use. Oh, nice. All right. Now you can see this is sitting up about three inches. We don't have enough room for it. And I can't take too much out of this piece or this piece, because that's what's holding the whole case together. So undermount, at least the size. out of the way. OK. So your next choice, and really the only remaining choice, is a drop-in. So this one drops in on top of the marble. And the only concern is that this is an edge that can get dirty, and you have to clean it all the time. But that's not such a bad look. And no. obviously, it's sort of an antique looking piece, so that might even be appropriate. Right. And you can see it's almost where we want it to be, so just trimming a little bit out of these will work fine. So this is the top. This is the sink. Right. Uh, maybe a little modification there. What are you thinking about in terms of modification of uh, depth, drawers? Right. Well, this sink is going to take up quite a bit of space, so I wouldn't try to do any storage in the top drawer. So this is just going to remain fixed? Right. And the bottom one, we're going to have the trap and the supplies to deal with, so we'll have to modify that heavily. But you also have no room for the faucets here. This is too shallow. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to add these blocks to the back of the furniture, which will hold it away from the wall. And that will give us more like 20, 22 inches of depth. Right. And plenty of room here for the faucet and the handles. OK. Let's start working on that top drawer. Doesn't work very well either. All right. You know, the sink that's going in is going to come right in the middle of this drawer. In most vanities, the top drawer is just the false front. So I'm going to remove the box, and we'll salvage the front. We'll use an oscillating saw to cut the bottom away from the front. All right. It's good. All right, here's the bottom drawer for you, Norm. All right, now the issue with the bottom drawer is that the trap for the sink, the plumbing is already in the wall. And when it's installed, it's actually going to be lower than the bottom of this drawer. And it's going to sit right about here, my guess is. So, the drawer won't open at all. Right. So what I'm going to do is we're going to make a trough here. We're going to cut 12 inches out of the center and create two small drawers on each side of a really a runway for the trap. All right. All right. All right, Kevin, to close in the sides, we're going to use the material we salvaged from the top drawer, that back piece. But it's a little more complicated than making square cuts. If I put the square against the bottom, you can see there's a big space here. That means the front is tipping out. Mm. And the front is curved, so we've got to make a compound cut. It's getting a little more complicated with each step. Bevels down on that. OK, so let's see how it fits. OK, so the bevel this way is good, because the front tilts out. And the bevel of the curve looks real good. Nothing straight on this piece, Nothing is straight. It? So I can mark the length on the inside here. And that's going to be a square cut. All right, now see this one fit. Flush with the plywood. 
Make sure it's square to the front. Go up a little bit more. That looks perfect. All right, let's cut the other one. All right, that one fits good. So now to secure these in place, we'll just run some glue along the bottom and the back and attach it with some brads. And because I can't nail through the draw front, I'm going to use these glue blocks. They get glue on both sides and a couple brads, and that's going to hold everything in place. Get the glue. Okay, now what we want to do is deal with the draw. And you know, they slide on these wooden slides right here that go in the groove of the draw, and they don't work very well. So we want to try to make an improvement to that. We're going to use these side mount slides. They're full extension. Part of it gets attached to the cabinet, the rest gets attached to the draw front, and that's going to give a nice smooth motion to the draw and plenty of support. We install two small blocks which will back up a wider piece of poplar to receive our hardware. One piece of the drawer hardware gets attached to the drawer itself. The other gets attached to the base. The last step is to add two pieces of half-inch pine to help support the center of the drawer. See if it all comes together. All right, now I'm started. Okay. Get, just push it in. You feel it snap. There it goes. All right. Hey, wow. Look at that. That works a lot better than it used to, Norm. <laughs> sure does. Well, now we want to install some backer blocks so we can secure the false front in place. And we'll attach the draw front with some screws from the inside because we can't nail from the outside. We'll use the front to locate the blocks. I'm using screws to attach the false front to allow the plumbers to have future access. Okay. All right, so that top one is fixed. The bottom one operates, and it's not going to get in the way of the plumbing. Right. Nice. So that's it for the carpentry. Now we have to have the stone top fabricated, and then we'll turn it over to the plumbers. Richard, it's now time to do the plumbing part of this project. Yes, somebody had to do it. But what do you I mean? Our designer has obviously had her way with the room. What do you I'm think? I'm not really sure where I am. It's someplace I know I'll never go. I think it's France, but it also feels like deep space to me. It's the first time <laughs> I've seen black wallpaper, too. Right. But. So, uh, but it looks great. And the piece looks great. And I love that they've done this backsplash right here to go in the back to really keep the water from running into that wallpaper. Okay. Now, you guys have done a great job for me to now build this off the wall. Now we have enough space for our faucet. Here's the spout they picked out. This is interesting to it's see what they actually got to nickel. match with this piece, because I know a lot of thought went into it. And that'll look, I think that'll look absolutely great. Kind of a traditional look, right? right? And we've got cross handles here. Beautiful. Okay, so I think that's a really great look with this uh, beautiful new piece too, or new old piece. So you're able to dry fit them in there. Are right. you ready to install them? I'm ready to go, so just uh, stand back. I'm going in. These stainless steel flexible supplies make it easy. I've got a pair of shutoffs, hot and cold right here. And now I come up with a hot and cold supply up to the stem units. And then between the stem units and the spout, there's another set of flexible supplies that go right to the spout. And that all just tightens up with an adjustable open end. And you say it's easy, despite the fact that you're doing it on your back and backwards. <laughs> it's where I'm most comfortable. <laughs> Good for you. I'm a plumber. <laughs> and now we're gonna put our lavatory sink in here. But before we do, I want to commend you on the amount of space you left for our fixture trap. Every fixture has to have a trap. It'll go right here. Well, I appreciate that, but uh, I'll make sure I pass it on to Norm, who actually engineered all this. I mean, plenty of space. It's perfect. That is great. So that drawer is still operational, and it doesn't uh, bugger your plumbing. Yeah. Norm's starting to get the hang of this, you know? 
We have an overflow right here, and that goes on the front side right there. Ooh, tight fit. Yeah, it's a non-swivel spout. That's fixed, yep. So now we'll set that down, and I have a few more connections to make, but what do you think? You know, it was a lot of work from a couple different trades, but I think the finished product looks terrific. I do. I like it. All right, thank you, Richard. All right, be good. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.